Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 27 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about the skills gap and that it is not just an HR problem. It's a real business problem that holds organizations back when it comes to productivity, embracing innovation and the progression into digital transformation. Make sure you stay until the end of the video to get David's top three tips for organizations on training. Hi Dave, it's great to see you and welcome back to another cloud computing training show. It's good to be back, glad to be back in the States. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you've been all over the world and back, just got back from India, so welcome back. Happy to be back. So. What are the right ways and the wrong ways to approach closing the cloud skills gap, Dave, in your opinion? Well, number one, understand what the damn thing is. I mean, I, I think that uh, if we're talking to people uh, who are moving into cloud and I say, well, what's the, what's the as is state and the to be state, they have no clue what they're, what they're uh, thinking about. So in other words, they're trying to think they're going to move forward with cloud computing based on the existing talent they have in the organization and nothing can be further from the truth. And so they need to get training right, they need to get hiring right, they need to get talent management right, they need to get uh, talent retention right. All these things that are uh, basically the Global 2000 typically doesn't think about, nor do the government organizations, even the small organizations out there. So we have this technology that's reshaping our business and we have to understand that it's strategic to the business and therefore the talent that we keep around is also strategic to the business. And ultimately this is something that uh, we're just not taking seriously, uh, you know, certainly within the people that I meet out there that are moving in the cloud. And, you know, part of, you know, doing the fun stuff, picking the technology and doing the application transformations and migrations and governance and security and with the new cloud stuff, which is shiny and new and, and cool technology, you have to figure out that you're going to have the talent that's going to come along to actually maintain it. And you may need to get outside help. You need, need to understand your stuff. Your HR department needs to help, you know, assessing this stuff. Uh, maybe do some testing, do some skills inventory stuff that people, you know, typically aren't apt to do. They're, they're just kind of apt to move along with the existing talent base without a clear plan of what the gap is between the as is state and the to be state. In other words, as is without cloud and to be with cloud and how it's going to work and play well at existing systems. And by the way, modernization of internal systems over time, the ability to kind of get into different security uh, technology, the ability to um, you know, leverage uh, different ERP systems and SaaS systems, having people who are skilled around to do that. Just a very complex array of things that people have a tendency to kind of dismiss because I think it's complex, it's not fun, and it's not necessarily want to spend all your time. Yeah, look, you know, you're absolutely right. There's definitely fears and threats in within organizations about making the right hire, but also how does that hire look from a retention point of view? And the figures came by uh, back from a report that was recently done by Capgemini. 81% uh, of, of new hires actually fail. Uh, and they're failing on several different points. And, you know, I think it's I think it's it's really key that if we're getting the right people, we need to understand why we're looking for those people in the first place uh, and, and really delving into the, the, the roles and what the outputs are of those roles. Uh, and it goes back to a show we did last week with um, Suram Krishnan from Headspin, where we're looking at, at bringing in, organizations are looking into bringing the right leaders within that field in order to understand what, what it is that the roles need to be and, and what the business uh, development needs to be and the, uh, the outputs. So I think it's, it's really key and it's a real worry out there, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, it, it'll kill your cloud implementation uh, very quickly. I mean, this and uh, underfunding is probably the, the two top reasons why cloud projects fail. I mean, people say, well, the technology fails or cloud doesn't live up to its potential. No, we solved that problem a long time ago. <clears throat> Excuse me, we solved that problem a long time ago indeed that you know, I can always make the technology work, but the human beings and the ability to kind of get the processes redeployed and the ability to kind of get people thinking differently, you know, is where things have a tendency to fall down. And I think this report kind of shows what uh, what I've been seeing out there for years. And it's getting a bit better, but the reality is that the technology and the ability for the technology to change over time is far outpacing our ability to get the talent in place. In fact, the number one reasons why Cloud computing is not moving at the pace that organizations are making a move is the talent shortage or inability to get the right skills in-house 
and their ability not and their inability to get off the dime and, and uh, make this make this change. And it's fundamental to making cloud computing work. It's of course it's not the only thing, but everything will kill you here. The technology doesn't work; that'll kill you. You don't have the talent; that'll kill you. You don't have the funding; that'll kill you. And you have to get all these things firing on all cylinders in order to make this technology work. Cloud's no different. It certainly isn't. It really isn't. There's, there are so many layers to this. There really are. And so, look, let's let's close the show off with your top three tips now with regards to uh, how this is going to pan out and uh, what advice you have for everyone. Yeah, what's your skills gap? I mean, that's a question I ask everybody, and they, they kind of give me a, a look at what the hell is a skills gap. And I say, what's the difference between where you are now and the technology we're looking to implement over the next few years and what kind of skill sets you need to have around. And by the way, that's not just a conversation, that's a very detailed skills inventory as to what's going on, who has a cloud talent, who doesn't, who has a security talent, who doesn't, who you're able to use in the new ops role, security role, DevOps, all these other things that are coming along. And we need to be able to assign the resources and figure out what's the delta between where we are now where we need to be a year, two years, three years, four years, five years down the line, the ability to put a hiring plan in place, you know, getting talented recruiters like yourself in, in, in action to go off and find the people that are going to make them successful. And, and that's a fundamental uh, confusing thing for me that uh, if we're moving in this direction, why are we taking that kind of risk? Because it's actually cheap to do. Understand what has to be done to reduce it. You know, so in other words, how are you going to reduce the skills gap over time? And is it training? Is it hiring? Is it, uh, um, in essence, buying a company? I noticed lots of Global 2000 companies are buying companies just to get the skills in-house, not necessarily for any products or services. And then finally, you know, training is a part of the IT budget, not the education budget. It drives me nuts when they look at training as something that is something optional for people that comes out of the education budget, out of HR which is typically gonna be underfunded as it is and not something out of the IT budget. It's, it's, if it's voluntary and not man, a mandatory for the skill sets you're looking to need, they have a tendency to be ignored. I mean, I don't wanna sit in, sit in training you know, one week out of the month, but if it's what's needed for me to be successful at my job, my employer requires it, I'm gonna definitely do it. So all these things really kind of come to the fact we just need to pay more attention to where we are and take it a bit more seriously than we current. I see this as a, largest risk to the to success with cloud computing and stuff that's going on out there are they really really those those three tips are awesome they really are and i hope a lot of people are going to be able to ask themselves better questions uh, to get the better skills they need and also you know from a and i think you really hit on something interesting there is that the hr budget for training it really should be driven from a budget where it's uh, focused from an IT resource point of view. Uh, I think if, if, if the, even that one shift of making sure that IT training is part of IT and not human resources, I think there's going to be a massive change there because the, the IT people are the, are the people that are underpinning the organization with regards to the needs of moving into cloud. So they really are going to know where to spend the money, who the best trainers are to bring in, uh, and who the people... Uh, what the type of people they need to fulfill the roles rather than having a, an HR uh, budget driven point of view where it's just going to be like you say underfunded and they're really not going to be you know governing it from a, a real point of leadership. Yeah I, I couldn't say it better myself so ultimately this uh, this has to take a higher priority than it currently is and if you don't you're going to suffer the consequences people are and, and I think people are going to fail doing this they're able to recover but it's going to cost them a tremendous amount of money but more importantly, uh, to the other show we did in the C-suites, this is going to cost their ability to, to get into a strategic space and prevent people from disrupting their market because you're unarmed, because you don't have the talent ready to go to go ahead and fight those wars. Yeah, exactly right. Dave, thanks for being part of the training show this week. Glad to have you back from India, safe and sound. Yeah, I'm glad I got back safe and sound. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you did enjoy watching this week's training show. We've got some, had some great shows this week, so if you're watching this one for the first time, please make sure to go back and watch the Australia show and the C-Suite show. There's, we've covered some uh, fantastic content. So thanks for watching. Remember, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share these videos with your friends and your colleagues.